During the next few minutes, you'll be introduced to the safe operating practices that must be followed when operating a handheld portable grinder. The operation of a portable grinder is an extremely dangerous work activity. Make certain you complete a field level hazard assessment prior to starting your task. One mistake, one slip, can have serious, even lethal consequences. If you see someone operating any type of grinder unsafely, stop the work process, then take the time to coach them in the correct behavior. Most grinder incidents occur because the operator skips over some basic safety practices by not recognizing hazards, becoming complacent, and taking shortcuts. For this reason, all operators must be instructed in the potential hazards and safe use of the grinder. In addition, make certain you read the manufacturer's operating manual before using the tool. Manuals can be obtained from your supervisor or at the tool crib. Here's the minimum personal protective equipment required for grinding. Hard hat, work boots, good quality leather gloves, and hearing protection. A face shield must be worn along with face and eye protection to include safety glasses with side shields. Mono goggles may be required if there's a possibility of particles deflecting inside the face shield such as grinding inside a pipe or other congested areas. Hazardous conditions requiring mono goggles would be addressed in the field level hazard assessment, company policy or a specific job site rule. Respiratory protection should always be considered depending on what you are grinding. Respiratory protection may consist of an air purifying respirator or even supplied air. Make sure you check the material safety data sheets to become aware of the specifics of the material you're grinding, such as stainless steel, galvanized products, and other exotic metals. Make certain you know the protection you require. Be careful about outer clothing. Anything that can snag or catch fire is dangerous. Wear long sleeves and tuck in shirt tails. Do not wear loose fitting clothes. It's best to wear natural fibers like cotton as synthetics like polyester are extremely flammable. Always remember that personal protective equipment is the last line of defense and does not replace the use of safe work practices for grinder operation. Your company may require monthly documented inspections of abrasive portable grinders. This will require a designated competent person to complete the inspections. The grinder's speeder RPM should be checked as per the manufacturer's specifications during regular scheduled maintenance and or repair. Air or pneumatic grinders require an inspection and RPM check once a week or every 20 hours of service. But most importantly, before each use, the grinder disc and various components must all be inspected by the operator. Check the cord for fraying and cuts and that the plug end is undamaged. Check the switch to ensure it operates properly. All grinder switches must be pressure controlled. All switch and trigger locks, called dead man switches, must be removed. If you lose your grip on the grinder, you want the machine to stop. An out of control spinning grinder is an invitation to disaster. Never tape or lock the trigger in any way. Check the guard to make certain it's secure. Guards protect the operator's hands, control the flow of sparks, and aid in preventing fragmented disc particles from flying back and injuring the operator. As the handle position and work position change, rotate the guard to provide maximum hand protection and spark deflection. Tighten the guard after adjustment. Manufacturer specifications provide different guards for different tasks. Ensure you're using the correct guard for the job task at hand. The guard provided by the manufacturer allows plenty of operational area and yet protects the operator. Do not tamper with or customize guards. They are there to protect you. Inspect the grinding disc, brush, or cone for chips, frayed edges, cracks, and general condition. As the diameter of a disc wears down, the circumference will travel at a slower speed and be much less efficient. A worn disc will not perform well and is dangerous. Worn discs can fragment and fly apart, causing serious injury or even death. Disc wear should not exceed one-third of the disc size. For example, a five-inch disc should be discarded when it reaches three and a half inches in diameter. If the disc is damaged, replace it. When changing discs or abrasive attachments, make sure the grinder is unplugged. Ensure that you have control of the cord end. This applies to both electric and pneumatic grinders. 
you do not want someone energizing the tool by mistake when you are changing a disc. Some discs require backing plates, some don't. Check the manufacturer's specifications. When a disc requires a backing plate, make certain it is the correct size by checking the manufacturer's manual for specific requirements. Always use a wrench or adjustment key to change discs. Do not over tighten as this may damage the disc. Tighten a wheel or disc just enough to prevent slippage. Make sure the adjusting keys or wrenches are removed before plugging in the grinder. After changing a disc or when first beginning work with a grinder, test run it in a safe position using both hands. You're checking for vibration or wobbling that could indicate poor installation of the disc or a poorly balanced wheel or disc. All grinders and discs have RPM ratings. The grinding disc must always have an RPM rating at least as high as the rating for the grinder. The disc may have a higher rating, but never lower. Disc rotating at higher speeds than the rating may fly apart or shatter altogether. Double check that both RPM ratings match. Your grinder RPM rating needs to be legible on the tool, but if in doubt, check with your supervisor or at the tool crib. Always ask. Every grinding disc and attachment has an intended purpose. All discs are labeled for the type of metals they are to be used on. Always use the correct tool for the intended job. General purpose wheels are not to be used for grinding on non-ferrous metals such as aluminum. If working on aluminum or any other non-ferrous metal, ensure your disc is correct for the task. Make certain you check the manufacturer's specifications for the various abrasive attachments you use and always choose the correct grinding tool for the task at hand. Faulty or defective grinders must be tagged and removed from service for repair. It's important to fill out the repair tag stating exactly what is not working correctly with the tool. This saves important maintenance time and effort in getting the tool safely back into service. Make certain your work area is clean, tidy, and free of combustible materials. A fire extinguisher should be present and you should be educated on how to use it. As they can be a source of ignition, sparks should be contained with spark deflection screens or fire blankets. This also protects other workers in the area. Always alert co-workers that you are about to commence grinding. All co-workers must be wearing safety glasses and if working in close proximity, face shields should be worn. Make a final check of the area before you begin grinding. Ensure no one is standing in your spark stream or line of fire. As the handling of a grinder demands physical effort, a worker should stretch and loosen up before commencing the job. Micro breaks should be taken throughout the job task to promote circulation, prevent cramping, and to keep your body in balance. Always assess the job task to determine correct posture and positioning for your body. Do not reach, overextend, or twist. Metal or wooden step-ups and portable pedestals are of immense value. Always keep the work in front of you, at a comfortable distance, with good footing. Always operate a grinder with both hands. When grinding smaller articles, make certain the material is secured according to its weight. Always use a vise, C-clamps, or vice grip. Never hold the material by hand. Manipulate the grinder to ensure that sparks are not creating a hazard for yourself or those working around you. Sparks are heated fragments of material. When they cool, they are not as visible, but just as harmful to someone's eyes or exposed skin. Again, always check that your co-workers are not in the line of fire. Always position yourself or move the material so the working end of the tool is pointed away from you. Hold the grinder tightly using two hands. Using the handle gives you better control and helps prevent dangerous kickback. Use short, even strokes with only enough force to work the material. Too much pressure makes the disc inefficient and could cause damage to both the disc and the grinder. The sound of the motor will signify when you're using too much force. An overworked motor will sound strained with an obvious drop in tone, pitch, and speed. There is a manufacturer's recommended angle for the best performance with each type of disc. Check the disc specifications before beginning your job task. 
When starting, make sure the disc is not contacting the material before the switch is turned on. Hold the handles tightly with two hands. When stopping, let the disc stall on the material you are grinding or on the workbench. Make certain all motion has ceased before setting the grinder face down. Do not touch the material immediately after operation. It may be extremely hot. When the job is complete or you have to leave the area, unplug the grinder. When working with temporary power or in damp locations, use ground fault circuit interrupters to help reduce the potential for electrocution. Always replace the wheel or disc if the tool is dropped while grinding and always be aware of the power cord as it can become an electrocution hazard if the grinder cuts into it. Use canvas nose bags to raise and lower grinders from elevations. Do not use the electrical cord for lifting a grinder. Only use the rim edge of the abrasive tool for grinding. The angle at which the abrasive disc contacts the material is extremely important both for safety and for maximum efficiency. Check the disc specifications for the correct angle of use. A common recommended angle of contact is 15 degrees. The first time you use any particular wheel, disc, brush, grinding cone or stone, check out the specifications or ask for advice. In general, never allow contact with the material above center, always below. A kickback or jamming effect can result from incorrect placement. 45 degrees below center is the commonly recommended contact point. But again, check the manufacturer's instructions. With wire brushes, only use the tips of the brush and always at a 90 degree angle. If you angle the brush, bits of wire may break off and hit you. An air-powered or pneumatic grinder works just like an electrically driven grinder, except the energy source is different. Make certain air hoses are in good repair and that the connectors are secure. Whip checks are used in all air hose applications. When changing a disc, always be in control of the hose end after detachment. This way, no one can energize your grinder by mistake. As abrasive wheels and discs may damage or even shatter if incorrectly handled, they must be carefully protected when stored. Treat your grinder with care and store it in a cool, dry area where it won't be physically damaged. Discs and wheels should be stored in a dry location, free of any contaminants, such as oil, grease or water, including condensation. Contaminants may break down the bonding agents within the wheel or disc and lead to dangerous disintegration. Never toss a heavy object on top of a fragile disc. Flawed or cracked discs must be discarded. After completing your task, clean, sweep and tidy your area so as to prevent small particle residue from becoming eye irritants to the worker who will be using the area next. Be considerate of your co-workers. Following safe work practices is a shared responsibility.